the day. God bless you. God bless you. One more time. We will be in the house of the Lord once again today, Friday. Jesus Christ's buffet. Yes, sir. Me and Jesus Holy Father study some. You know what I'm doing? I'm just so glad to be in the house of the Lord again today. You know what I'm saying? I've been chomping at the bit since Wednesday because I, you know, wanted to bring this message. God is good, man. You know what I'm saying? Amen. All the time. So, you know, it ain't going to be long while I'll be able to spend more time with my Christian family, with my, with my, with my church house family. You know what I'm saying? I'll be able to spend more time, and that's what I want to do for you. Because God has put it in my heart, you know? Because what the deal is today, we're going to go on and pray because I want to I let you know something. You know, we want to we wanna pray for uh, 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 Brother Charles Barlow, Brother Mike Barlow, uh, Sister Garza, Brother Garza. You understand? Yes, we want to talk to Melody and her family, Joshua, Jonah, and his, and, and his wife and family. And we want to talk about Sister Kim. We want to say, how you doing? We know that you're hard at work for your family. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong. Because God said, once you put your hands to the plow, you know, you can't look back, you know. So not only are you taking care of your, your, uh, your, your church family, you got to take care of your physical family too, you know that. Amen. That's one thing God wants you to do. God wants you to have enough love for everybody, because that's what he got. That's God right. got love for everybody. And I didn't realize that, too. you know, that no matter what the world was throwing at me, Jesus Christ loved me. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't, I, you know, it was hard for me to understand. So I want to thank you. And one uh, uh, moment and glorify, and I want to say, you know, I want I want to bless my, my wife and my my family. I want to say thank yes, you sir. for uh, sticking close to me. You know what I'm saying? Because you gave me an opportunity to change. You know what I'm saying? That's what was so good about it. Because that's what I want to do. I said I had changed, so I wanted to look up the word change. I want to know what what change meant because you know I always said was you know maggots. Change in the flies and caterpillars change in the in the butterflies and you know uh, you know the, the, the little old things in the water they turn into mosquitoes. So I say, well, what I'm gonna change and do is come to find out it ain't nothing like that. It says, you know, uh, the English uh, uh, definition of change is this here: uh, making someone or something different. Lord, have you see what I'm saying? Thank you, Lord. After. Are, are altered or modified. You understand? Yes, sir. Replaced. You see what I'm talking about? That's a beautiful thing, huh? Amen. See, I said, well, come on, Lord. You know what I'm saying? Modify me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Yeah. You understand? And that's what he was doing, you know? And that's what I say. I, I say, God is so wonderful, you know what I'm saying? To be able to do that, you know, to come in your life and change you like that, you know what I'm saying? So I thank you, Lord. And I, I marvel and I glorify, you know that. Yes, Lord. You know, make someone or something different. Well, I feel the difference in my life. You know, I want to thank, you know, my wife for sticking with me. Because without my wife, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, you know, I'll probably still be with you because I've done it. You know, I had to come in, you know what I'm saying? So I thank you. I had to come in out the cold. Thank so I thank you, Lord. Right? You know what I'm saying? I thank you for it because I asked for a wife. And God gave me a wife in four hours I met her. And I've been with it now going on 12 years. You know what I'm saying? So I thank the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And we want to pray. We want to thank the Lord. We want to pray for those, you know, our members of uh, Big Friends Jesus Holy Bible Study Center. And we want for my pastor, you know, uh, Herman Young, you know, Minister Herman Young. Praise and the Lord. his wife and his brother. You understand? Charles Barlow, Michael Barlow, uh, Sister Garza, uh, Brother Garza, uh, Sister Melody, and, and, and Jonah. And their family and sister, uh, 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 sister Kim, Lord God, we want to thank him, Marvin and yes, Brother, Brother John Barry. We, he's on his way. If he make it, God bless him. If he don't, you know what I'm saying. We we ask you right now, Lord, to give him traveling grace, Lord yes, God. Put your angels around him. Hide him in your shadow. That's what you do. Yes, Lord. Keep him in your provision, Lord God. For we thank you for our brothers and our family in 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 in, in, in the word of the of Lord. So we thank you, we marvel and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of heaven. Amen. How y'all doing today? Jesus today is Jesus, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. We definitely got to do that, because we got to be covered. We got to say it. In Jesus' name. Yes, sir. You understand that it ain't, it ain't nothing is finished.
until you must want to cover it in the blood of Jesus. You understand, baby? It's not finished. So whatever way you want to take it, do whatever you want to do it. You know, once you cover it in the blood of Jesus Christ, that's it. Amen, brother. So we, we thank you, Lord, for giving your life for our Lord, Lord God. We thank you for going on camera. And we want to say, how y'all doing today? Today we got something beautiful to eat today. Because like I said, this is uh this is number 34, part four. There is power in the word. Yes, sir. There's power in the word. You understand? There's power in the word yes, Lord. of God. You understand? Amen, brother. Amen. We'll get right into it. We're going to go to page 1206. Let's go to page 1206. Because I just want to make you understand that. You know, once you make that change, you've got to stay the way you are. Now, you can always change back or change into something else or do whatever you feel you want to do. But, you know, like I was saying about those around, once a maggot turns into a fly, it can't turn back into a maggot now. You understand? But you, as a child of God, God gave you reason in the way you could decide which way you want to go. So, I think I done changed, you know what I'm saying, that I want to as much as be you know, on the side that Jesus Christ said, yeah, I want to be on his side. Yes, sir. You understand? I want to give his word. I want to preach his word. I want to teach his word. I want to mess around. I want, I want to, I want to be, to, when I get there, I want to say, good and faithful son, come on in. You understand what I'm trying yes, to say? Because when it turned out the road I was going, and believe me, I wouldn't want to be down there with all them crazy people. You understand? Do you understand? You yeah, stop and take a look around. Look at the people that you are around right now. You know, just stop and take a look at the friends that you have. What, are, they, are they Christians? Or are they, are, 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 have, they, have they given their life to Christ? Have they repented? Take a look at them, you understand, and realize that that is the kind of people you're going to be with down there if you're not living for Jesus. Amen, brother. If you're not going according to the word of God, which is Jesus Christ himself, his word became flesh. We talked about that last week. And he dwelled among us. And he gave him a name that was above all names in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? So if you ain't around, you see, I mean, I would I mean back then you stop and think about it. Jesus had disciples, but he had other disciples that were there. So you know when he, they said that, oh, this word here is too hard for us. You know what I'm saying? That's what they told Jesus. This saying, these sayings are they too hard for us. So they went on about their way, you understand? But then Jesus looked and told the twelve, he said, well, okay, y'all going to go too. I, you see what I'm saying? I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere either. And that's the point I wanted to make you. That I ain't going nowhere, Lord. Amen. I'm standing right here where I'm going to stay really because, believe me, there's some people that I deal with now. From back then, I'd be like, Lord, have mercy on <laughs> me. Let's go to Mark, the 16th chapter. And we ain't going to be no better than the next man. In Mark the 16th chapter, the 14th verse. 14. We're going to, that's going to be our open scripture. We're going to open up with the scripture on page 1206, Mark the 16th chapter, verse 14 and 15. Amen. It says this. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Yes, it Lord. says, Afterwards he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and unbridled, you know what I'm saying? Unbreaded. Unbreaded, yeah, no. un, un, no. okay, let me see. And that word, you know, that 14, 2, that 16, 14, two, what is that, is uh, rebuked. Jesus rebuked them, see? That word, that has the, 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 yeah. the, you know, to That's translate it, yeah. they say unbreaded. But to translate that word and said rebuke. Jesus rebuked them. You know what I mean? So what I did was I went and I looked up. <coughs> I went and looked up, rebuked them. Okay. It says extreme ex express sharp disapproval. Our circumstances of someone because of their belief and actions. That's what that's what that means. Rebuke me if I'm wrong. Yeah, rebuke me, Lord. And he said that sharp he was sharply rebuked. No, the word the word rebuke means a sharp 
you say it's a the, the definition of the people so then it says express sharp disapproval. Express sharp disapproval. Yes, sir. So they're not, they're not watered down? No, no, no. It comes straight to the point. When, 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 you, when somebody rebuke the spirit that's upon you, you understand? There is no way around that spirit. The spirit got to get to the Yes, sir. got to go. you do it in Jesus' name, they say only by the name of Jesus will the devil flee. Yes, sir. So when you rebuke the devil, he will sharply yeah. get away from you. Got to go. You understand what I'm saying? So this is what Jesus did to his disciples. By he rebuked Jesus. them. Them with their unbelief. Because they didn't believe that he had risen. By and heart, heartless of heart. Because they had believed not them which had seen him. After he was raised. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They saw it. And the, and the rest of them, they didn't want to believe it. So Jesus rebuked them. That means he sharply. He was like, hey, man, he, he rebuked them sharply. No, no, no. Have mercy, Jesus. Okay? And because they didn't want to believe. You understand? So the witnesses, in other words, you know, I'll be hard on the witnesses. I like talking about witnesses. So the witnesses saw. It ain't just one of them that saw it. It was a it was, it was a bunch of them that saw Jesus when he was re-resurrected because he'd been yes, there. Yes, And then it was those that didn't believe. So what Jesus did, he rebuked those that disbelieved. But what it was, though, it says, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? See, he didn't say to every man. He said creature. Yes, sir. I mean, even if you sit there and you talk to you, you will rebuke that spirit at the dog. Because remember, the, uh, Jesus, they had some swine that the, the evil spirit went into the swine. So God said, you got to rebuke every creature. Especially if it's not in the God, my God. Yes, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Right, Jesus. You understand? And I started, I asked the pastor about it. Pastor, I want you to explain it to him. Because we were talking about it back then. That the man on the cross, when he was with Jesus, when Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. See, he couldn't get off that cross and go get baptized. But God himself, Jesus himself let him know. Jesus let him know that. He, Jesus gave the okay that it was all right for him not to be baptized. That he will be with him today in paradise. But you as a Christian today, the thing to do would be for you to be baptized. You understand? Amen. If you have an opportunity to be baptized, be baptized. Yes, sir. You understand? Because see a lot of people that say, well, the man on the cross didn't get baptized. Well, because they, if Jesus mess around and gave it okay, I think it's because Jesus yeah. said no man. He couldn't come down. Right, right, he couldn't get off that cross. You see what I mean? So if we understand that. And so that's what, baptized. So that's what I want to try to make them that God's word don't come back more. Amen. So he, he wasn't directed at that man on that cross because he couldn't come down off that cross. But when God tells you that you need to be baptized, you need to go get yes, baptized. Brother, yard, you understand what I'm trying to say? Don't try to say, oh man, the man on the cross did he okay, well, could he get off that cross? Well, go get, let him nail you up on the cross. Let me see you tell him, hey, man, can I go get baptized before you crucify me? You know, you don't play no games. Like it, brother. Don't you play it. word games with God. Because God knows. God is the word. So how can you play word games with God? So oh, try to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your thank name, Lord. Lord. We thank you for you're so merciful, Lord. So kind. So gracious, Lord God, I thank you for changing it, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God, for you are so merciful, Lord God, because you could have condemned me, Lord God. You could have turned your back because I had decided to walk with the devil, Lord God, when I put that rag in my mouth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving me time, Lord God, that yes. I was able to change, Lord God. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, my, my life is so beautiful now, Lord God. My family is so yes. beautiful. I thank, thank you, Lord God. I thank you for to how I feel when I'm around them, Lord God. Oh, I thank you, Lord God. My church family, my, my immediate family, Lord God. It's just that that's what it is, Lord. You changed me, Lord God. And how I know it with you, Lord God, because ain't nothing but love come from me now, yes, Lord God. Yes, sir. Come in to me, Lord God. I thank you. I marvel and I glorify your name. You're so powerful, Lord. Yes, Lord. Rebuke me anytime. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Me Hallelujah. Too, Lord. Glory me to too, your name, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. For you are so merciful, so kind, yes, Lord. Lord. 
I thank you, Lord. Thank you. I thank you. I glorify and I, 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 I give you the highest praise, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord yes, God. Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you look down upon your people, Lord God. Make them understand, Lord God. Because it's you, Lord God, that love yes. of Lord God. It's you that love of Lord God. They have no understanding, Lord God. But we want to give them understanding and wisdom and the way it comes from. The word of God, Lord God. Yes. That's why I don't have no problem with passing Bibles out because it's your word. So us as Christians, if we want something to change in this world, let's get more Bibles out there, Lord yes. God. That's the only way they're going to get the word. They say, how can they hear the word unless it come from a preacher? You understand what I'm saying? So sir. study the word of God. Teach the word of God. The Bible said right there, you know, right here in the 15th chapter, it say, and they said unto them, go ye into the world yes, sir. and preach the gospel. You understand? Amen. So that's what you should do. If God told you to do that, do that. Yes, sir. You understand? There will be people that were called to preach. There will be people that call to teach. People that being called to evangelism. You understand what I'm saying? They have categories for you. Amen. They got bishops. They got deacons. You understand? They got teachers, preachers. You understand? Do what God tells you to do. Get in where you fit in. How about that? Yes, sir. I'm quite sure you can understand that, huh? Get in where you fit in. Amen. They got prophets. You understand? They, they got evangelists. You understand? So get in where you fit in. Yes, sir. I remember I asked God. I said, what can I do for you, Lord? What can I do for you, Lord? And if this was over, what we say, minister to my people. So this is what I'm going to do to the day I die. I ran. I did like Jonah. I ran. I ran. I didn't have a minimum, so I ran over here to Fort Myers. But God found me. My God. You understand? And he used my wife to say, until you do what you told God you were going to do. Because we right. make promises to God. We make promises to God, and then we turn around and we don't hold our end on the morning. But we go, we ask God to do certain things for us, and then we know it was God that did it. So, therefore, why can't we keep our promises to God? Hey, your you know, if you make a vow to God, you stick to it. If you don't believe me, they got a well out there for you. See, that's my well right here. So, ask the Lord to make sure because he can put you in a worse situation. Because I went up to Baytown the other yesterday, Wednesday. I went to Baytown Wednesday. And I met a nurse there when she saw me in this wheelchair. She started talking to me. And she asked me about, you know, what had happened. And I told her what had happened. And then she told me that her son was 25 years old. And they gave him something that he wasn't supposed to have. And he's paralyzed from his neck down. Uh, he can talk, talk and he can move his arms. I think it is, you know. But like she say, he he's 25 years old. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's been in that way for two years because now he's 27. But he, he, would, he would think of getting married. You know, she told me his little fiance didn't leave him. But then I thought my situation was grave. And then I realized 25. Man, when I was 25, I was out there doing things that I knew I shouldn't have been doing. This man was at work, working for a company that had took him out of state. And because he was out of state, his mom, when this happened, his mom ended up having to take a loan for them to life flight him back because they wouldn't just do it on a courtesy. So she had, she said she had to go and make a loan to where she could get them to bring him back to Houston, to where she could get him back to Baytown. Ain't that was something? And I'm thinking, I got problems. Man, there's always somebody yeah, worse than you. Worse, so that's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't take the time that you have here for granted. Do what you do, man, and if you be, if you do, do it in, 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 in do according to the law. Amen. You, say, you won't have no problem. Read the word of God. It's power in the word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about today. There's power in the word. Amen, brother. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, man. I'm just saying. Okay, let's go to man. We're going to move on. Let's go to the book of Matthew. We're going to go to 1150 Matthew, the 12th chapter. Verse 34 through 37. Let's see what the words say. Amen. Like my pastor say, we ain't got to go far. Let's see what the words say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's see what the words say. Okay. Chapter 12, verse 34. 
Hey man, thank you all. Um, and yeah, hey, you know this is the red, so you know this is the word of God speaking. You know what I'm saying? And this time in the Bible, you know, it's written in red, you know what I'm saying? I'm quite sure everybody knows, but there's still some people today, you would say that I, everybody ought to know that. That when you open up the Bible, what's written in red is Jesus speaking, right? Yeah, but there are some people that, that they that far away from God, that they don't even know that. They don't know that when it's written in red, that's Jesus speaking. So I want to let you know that this right now, what we're talking about, the power in the word, this is the word that's speaking. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to go to verse 34. Verse 34 says, O generation of vipers. Talking about us. Because remember what I said. Whenever you read the word of God, it's good for you to try to take yourself and put yourself in that equation. Amen. You understand? Because God is talking to you. It don't make no difference how far back. We're talking about uh, uh, 2,024 years ago. That's what we're talking about. This book was written probably two years after that, so let's say about 2022. There's like 2,022 years ago this book was written. I don't know when it was, 1600, but they had written it down in Hebrew first from somewhere in the Hebrew. But I want to let you know that, that I know that this word here was written. And it's even talking about a generation of vipers back then. You think we have a generation of vipers now? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, we do. See, what I'm trying to tell you, all you got to do is apply it to See, but now I don't hang out with those vipers. Oh, thank you, Lord. No, I don't think I'm going to go. I don't think I'm going to hang out with y'all, but you know what? It's going to be chaos and confusion. You know when you're in the situation you don't need to be in. Amen. Because it's going to be total chaos and confusion. <laughs> we might think we, 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 we enjoying ourselves, but you're going to pay for it in the long run. Amen, brother. You understand what I'm saying? You understand? Only in the name of Jesus will you be saved. Call upon that name. Amen. It yes, says, Lord. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Amen. They got some out there, they think they're doing, they doing the right thing, even though they're out there doing evil. Yeah. They want to tell you about Jesus. They want to tell you, you ever ran into one of them? Oh, yeah. I used to be one of them. Me too. I used to be in there using drugs telling about God. You know what I mean? Trying to change people's lives, and I'm sitting right there with them. No. I should have been trying to change my own life. I don't know what I'm talking about. We talked about it earlier today. We talked about change now. Amen, brother. See, because when you change, you don't know you change. You See, you can't do When you make a change, and you make a change for the better, yes, you sir. start continuing that down that road. That's what God said. Broad is gate, narrow is the road, you understand? Broad is the way that leads to destruction, right? But narrow is the way. That's yes, how. You understand? So when you find yourself on that broad road, you understand what I'm saying? You better understand. Ain't no sense in you talking about God. You better start thinking about changing your life. Amen, brother. You understand? You ain't no sense in sitting up in the, in, the, in the drug house or going out there buying it or in the liquor store, the drug store or the club or something like that. You sitting in there talking. You know what's going to happen to other people and say, man, you need to get on up out of here with that. You know why? Because the devil don't want to hear that when you're trying to mess around and corrupt the one that's sitting on side here. Amen, brother. You're he on probably it. not even want you. He wants the one that's sitting there because it's easier to get here because you over here talking about God. He wonder what this man doing. He hope God strike you down for being in there want to talk about God and want to talk. And the, the Bible says, how can you be an evil? No, you understand? <laughs> Speak good. Uh, how can you tell your kids you love your kid when you treat their mama the way you treat them? No, I haven't. Uh, how can you love your child when you're taking you you're taking the money and spending it on drugs, or alcohol, instead of helping the, them uh, achieve anything in life? No, you understand? God say, how can right. you be an evil? Speak good. I, I was like that one time. See, I'm trying to tell you because I'm talking about me. But I sit back when I read this word, I put myself in this position and I understand. Man, I'm glad you changed me, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Put yourself in this position. This is why the devil don't want you to read the word. Because the word got power. The word got power to change you, man. Yes, sir. If yes, you don't sir. read the word, and the word tells you that you're evil and you shouldn't be trying to speak good things. Oh, I love you. Yeah, I love you. Let me go stay out all night long. Lord, have mercy. You understand? 
hang out with your friends on a birthday, you understand? I don't know. I don't know what the people around you think about good or not, but I know what evil is. But I was living that life. I was living that life, man, so I know what evil is. Amen. I thank the Lord that I changed. Thank you, Lord. You understand what I'm saying? Maggots changed in the flies, caterpillars changed in the butterflies. What you gonna change me to? What are you gonna change me to? I hope you change into that marvelous life, son. Amen, brother. You understand? Because that's what I thought. I thought that I was going to be a marvelous life until I read the word of God and found out that I wasn't going to be the marvelous life, that I was going to be able to walk into the life. So now that's what it is. When I walk into a room, people don't look and say, oh, Lord, that's going to be found out. You understand? They happy to see me when they went up in, what I'm doing, till I tell them, oh, man, I've been going to church at home studying the word of God. Amen. Man. We're doing a live Facebook Bible study on every Friday, man. You understand? Yes, sir. We're like, wow, man. No stuff said, yeah, man. God changed me, man. My God, my God. said, we healed through our testimony. Do you understand that? Yes, God sir. God said, you can be healed through your testimony. You can start going to church, living the life that you're supposed to live. And when somebody asks you, man, what happened? You can say, man, I tell you what. God came to me, my and I God, tell you, I went to church, God, and I got God. that word, and I changed my life, and the word had so much power, I changed my life. My you understand? God, and now God. I praise God, and I thank God for all that he's done for me, and you know what they're saying? Man, what happened to him? That God, dude, Jesus, they God, think God. like if they really, truly were concerned about you, they'll be happy for you. Amen, brother. But if, they look at, brother. if they look at you, and they walk away, and they better come go to your neighbor and say, man, that dude the way crazy. You see what I'm saying, Tom? Well, let me be crazy. Uh, I'm going to be crazy for you. You understand that? You hear me? Thank you, Lord. Amen, brother. Man, I love what I'm I doing right now. Man. Devil, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. If you can go out there and do all that mischief, you take stuff that don't belong to you and mistreat people and everything else you was out there doing, you understand what I'm saying? You tell me you to change. Yeah. Now, what happens what happen if you become a victim now? Because you will, because God say whatever you do gonna come back to you. Amen. You ain't gonna get away. You ain't gonna repent and ask God to forgive you. Yes, sir. And He's gonna mess around and allow your brother to forgive you. You understand? Or either you will continue in the life you live in and guess what? It's gonna be one your day, one day. Amen. You understand? Because believe me, there's no what they call it, there's no love among thieves. You understand? They want what you got at all times. Yes, sir. Yeah. Let's continue reading this here. Verse 34 says, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good, good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Yes, sir. So whatever you got in your heart, you understand, you know, you know it's going to come out your mouth. So you got to watch it because you can speak blessings, but you also can speak curses out your heart. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Well, God wants you to change the way you do speak because it's out of the abundance of the heart. My so out of how, out of the, you got a big heart because God say you got a big heart because if you say out of the abundance, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? You can have a big heart. Amen. Read this word. It's going to make it big. You won't be able to fit every word of it in there, too. You understand? They say, they say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. You understand what I'm saying? It says right here, verse 5 says, A good man out of out of the good treasures of the heart bringeth, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? But this is what Jesus was talking about. How can you, that's, that's evil, do good things if that's how your heart is? Yeah. If yeah. your heart, if you don't have, your heart is evil, you ain't going to be able to do good. You don't think you're doing good, but somewhere down the line, you still going to show them that you really didn't get them. Amen. You only did that as a front. That was a front. You know what I'm saying? We know what front is, right? Oh, yeah. Put on. All right. There you go, Pastor. Put it on. Okay. Verse 36 says, but I say unto you, now we're talking about just the word of God speaking right here. Yes, sir. They say, but I say unto you, 
that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Ain't that something? Amen. So you better watch what you say. And see, once I start reading the word, this is why the evil man don't want to read the word of God. Because the word of God is going to let you know, you understand what I'm saying? That what you say and what you do, that at the end of the like day of judgment, you're going to have to be held accountable for that. You better hope you to repent it before then, because God said when he comes, you ain't going to be able to do it then. Don't, don't go run down to the church house there now. You know what I mean? Because God say wherever you at, that's the state wherever you at when you come, that's the state for me. So don't try to go run and look for somewhere to go, man. Because, see, I'm going to know what I need to do. I'm going to need to hit my knees and thank the Lord that I have repented and asked you to change my life, Lord. I'm going to be thankful and glorified that he's here now that they don't have to deal with these evil, this evil generation. Amen, you understand? Brother. Because, you see, God don't much want to specify what generation. He says this in verse 34. He says, oh, generation of vipers. No, so, I don't know which generation you're talking about. Because since Jesus hung and died on the cross for 2,024 years ago, you know what I'm saying? Amen. So I don't know which one of the generations Jesus is talking about. But he know they got some generations of vipers. Because oh, he said, oh, generation of vipers. Yes, sir. How can you speak good? Uh, 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 how can ye be in evil speak good? Oh, man, look here. Verse 37 says, for by the words thou shalt be justified. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. You see what I'm saying? That's why he say, don't go in there and mess my knowing you ain't doing right. And you in there trying to teach somebody the word of God. See, I didn't know that at that then, but I read this now. And I know I say, thank you, Lord. For this thing about a doubt, I'm inside that I was uh, using drugs and telling people about Jesus. And I'm sitting right there with him. God would have condemned me because of what I was doing. Amen, because I'm the one that chose to do it. Ain't nobody bigger. It. But I started having a feeling that it was something wrong. Yes, sir. So I'm trying to tell you now, before you mess around and end up in the situation Jesus brought that sky, I want to tell you what I was doing. I was in there. Yeah, I was talking about the word of God. But you know what? <coughs> Not knowing that I was condemning myself. No, that's so I want you to know that if you in there, if you somewhere and you speaking about God, knowing that your heart is evil, you better right now get on your knees and repent and turn away from what you're doing and stay. Because if you're talking about God, just stay talking about it. When you change, stay talking about it. Just don't be in those places. Amen, brother. You understand? Honest, you know, I remember when I was in this, at this certain place, you know, he thought that we had to, oh, that's where the devil's at. The devil's at the club. I'm going to go down to the club and we're we going to mess around and uh, we're going to get to speak and we're going to speak. That ain't what God's talking about, man. You understand? Leave them people alone. Amen. You understand? They know what they, they know what they know. You don't have to go down there and hit them over the head, preaching the word of God while they're inside the club. God, you already just said, huh? You being good, don't be, them people being evil, don't go over there speaking about God. So why are you over there speaking of God to them? Let them come to God because no, they're going to they gonna change their life. They're going to change their life. They're going to do it. You ain't even got to do nothing about it because God, that word, that name, Jesus is going to draw. Jesus is going to draw my that confusion. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. Man, I thank the Lord for his word, man. You understand? I, I didn't know nothing about that. It says, it says in 36. I'm going to read 36 and 37. Because see, read this right here. Let me know. I sat back and I had to think about me. It said, but I say unto you. This is Jesus. He said, but I say unto you. Talking about me, Marvin. But I say unto you, Marvin. You understand? That every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give accounts of Therefore, in the day of judgment. Amen. So I'm like, oh, Lord. You understand? There will be a judgment day. Yes, sir. So don't think that it ain't going to happen. You know, it's a lot of people think that, oh, you know, once you go, you go. And well, you better believe that show is going to happen. You know, just better make sure where you want to go. Ask right, yourself that question. See, and I know where I'm going now. For by, the, true, for by the words that shall be justified, and, thy, and by thy words that shall be condemned. You understand that? See? 
So I didn't want I didn't want to be condemned by my own by my own words. Amen, I didn't want to be condemned by my own word. So guess what I did? I started speaking the word of God. I picked it up. I started reading it. And that word that I said, those were the words of God because it's in red. So this is what Jesus said. So that's why I enjoy reading it now because I want to read about because that's that's what let me know that there's power in, in the word. Amen. Because the word changed me. The word changed me. Amen, brother. Me too, brother. Yes, man. Let's go to John. We're going to go down to John, page 12, 12, 20, 12, uh, 64. Page 12, 64. We're in the sixth chapter of John. You get a little bit more of this here. Because just like I try to tell you, God is good. All the time. I just want to show you some of the things that he did, you know, with his word. Yes, sir. God did this with just his word. So what else do we need to do? But I mean, what do we need to do, man? Because really, and truly, uh, hey, you know, another thing I understand. God said, go ye and preach to him, preach the gospel. Some of y'all are not in a position to hear the gospel. So that's why we have to go out every day and, and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's you don't go word. out there and try to uh, force it on nobody because God gave a reason to decide whether they want to do it according to Jesus Christ or they want to do it according to the devil. You understand what I mean? So all you have to do is just present yourself. As it, you as you present yourself out there as a living sacrifice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You understand? We're going to read the book of John, the sixth chapter, verse 28. Okay. The sixth chapter. We read from the sixth chapter, verse 28. This is something here. You know. It said, Then said they, God, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Then said they unto him, They were talking to Jesus, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? You understand that? Yes, sir. They asked you, Jesus, What can we do to work the works of God? Well, you know what? I'm just saying it. So, you know, then, then Jesus, because this is Jesus in 29, he answered. He said, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has. That's, that's a powerful work, believe. That's all you got to do. You see what I'm saying? That's how. It's not hard. People try to say how hard this word is. Even the disciples, God had disciples that turned away from him because they said this word is too hard. God, how hard is just believing? you got witnesses that know that Jesus lived, that this, this word of God walked on this earth. Yes, sir. He did miracles. He raised the dead. He let the blind see the lame walk. You yes, understand sir. what I'm yes, saying? Uh, he did everything he was supposed to do that he said he'd do nothing unless his father saved to do it. But the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were so evil, trying not to give up their position. Wanted to still wear a big robe with the big hat. Lord, have mercy. You understand? <laughs> that they called and asked them for him to be crucified. But they couldn't do it. Ain't that something? My God. That's God's people. Amen. God's people are the, are the Jews. The Jews, according to the Jewish tradition, that the Jews couldn't kill nobody on Passover. They couldn't kill somebody else. They couldn't condemn them. So they lied on him and allowed the Romans to do it. And the Romans did it in the worst way. They crucified him. That was a terrible way for him to die. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Hear that? You heard what the word said? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God. He had it all not in hand. He said, This is the work of God. Amen. This is the work of God. I can see him standing there with his arms outstretched. He said, this is the work of God. Believe. Ah, gee, I believe, Lord. You see what I'm saying? That's all he had to do. Believe on him whom he has sent. And who he sent? He sent his son. And I see Jesus standing there with his arms outstretched. He's telling you, man, it's not hard. I got to believe that God sent you. Amen. That's all you got to do. 
So see, that's what I'm trying to tell you. When I started reading this word, it became so strong. That's what I said. And this word is power. Amen. I say, man, this word got power in it. That's how. Man, I mean, look at what we talk about. We want somebody to witness to us. Lord, come and tell us whether, Lord, did you see it? No, we didn't see it. God say, how can you hate your brother who you see every day and love him you haven't seen? My and then God. I put that to, the, to me being in the game. How can I love my hate my brother who I see every day? Man, I was living on Bangalore God. I was living, I'm from the Bangalore God. That's what a certain group they call themselves who crippled him, but I didn't work. Do whatever they do over there. But I was a blood, come straight out of penitentiary. So then I asked myself, I was right there seeing them every day and they were seeing my me. God. They had knowledge in their heart for me and I had knowledge in my heart for them. And Jesus asked me after I started reading this word, he, his word spoke to me my and God. it said, how can you hate your brother who you see every day and love me who you have not seen? Amen. And then I asked myself, I said, Lord, tell me how, Lord. Uh, and he said, all you got to do is believe in him that sent me, that he ah, sent me. I believe you know So I started I believing. Believe. You understand? You know what they call me now? They call me the weeping minister. You understand? Because the word is so powerful. Yes, sir. It brings tears to my eyes when I think about the person that I was back then. How I was living my life, man. You know, and they had the good people. I laughed and joked and kicked the women and everything, and I would walk away from them, feeling balance in my heart. God said, how can you do that? Lord, have mercy. He wanted to ask a question. How can you do that? Ask that question. Amen, brother. How you going to get that question? You going to get it if you read the word, man. The word is right here. It's power, man. Amen. You've got to pick a Bible up, man. You've got to pick the Bible up. Yes, That's sir. your first yes, step. Make your first step in picking up this Bible. Read God's word. God's Amen. word will turn you away from the things that you're doing, man. Because all you got to do is put yourself in this position. God is going to tell you what you ain't supposed to do. Yes, sir. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, we had victory in Jesus, Holy Bible Fellowship. 1375 East Lucas. Amen. Brother Amen. Minister Herman Young. I thank the Lord that he gave me a day, and this day is Friday. I call it Jesus Christ's buffet. Yes, sir. Because, boy, the Lord gives you so much in a week, boy, you can't do nothing but call it a buffet. Amen. Amen. This ain't no plate. This ain't no plate of food. You can't eat this uh, 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 in one day. It take a whole week for me to come back with this. Here. My God, my God. And I thank the Lord for that. Amen, brother. Yes, our Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, thank you, Lord. Hey, Amen. I want to go to uh, have a couple more, man. I got a couple more scriptures for you. We're going to go to, uh, uh, let's go to John. We're going to go to 1283. Page 12, 18, John 17, 14 through 16. See, you ain't gonna have to go far. See, I just I read all over the word of God. You understand me? Amen. He'll, he'll draw y'all in. He's gonna say, Why would I can that's what I'm talking about? <laughs> that's what I'll be saying. I got so much groceries right now, like Pastor say, I got good. I already know I'm gonna run out of time but I run out of groceries. You understand me? Yes, but God already put it in my heart. Yes, sir. You understand? We're going to bet you, if y'all don't got it by now, this is part four. If you don't have it by now that the word is powerful, God let me know, man, I don't think you're going to ever get it. Just, and whoever out there looking or whoever see this video, if you don't have it down by now, if you don't know that the word of God is powerful, That's how. you understand, you ain't going to get it because you're still in denial. You understand? I was that way. I can't say nothing. But I want you to know. What you're doing is futile. You're kicking against the brick. That's what God said. Stop. Change the way you live. Repent. As God is coming to your life. Stop being evil and trying to do good things for people. That ain't going to do you no good. That's not going to matter how much you spend. You ain't going to heaven like that. You're going to bust hell wide open. Okay, John 17. We're going to read verse 14. We'll go to verse 14. Okay, 1714. Okay. Thank you, Lord. I have given them the word. Amen. You know what, Lord? <laughs> you see that? Yes, sir. Jesus talked. It's in red ink. 
You got what you gave him the word. Amen. See, that's the father right there telling him what to say. He said, I gave you the word. I got the word right there. That's what he said. He just said, open up. We ain't going to mess around and have stuff. He said, I gave you that word. Yes, sir. And the, and the world has hated them because they are not of the, of the world. Thank you, Lord. Even as I am not of the world. Amen. Who are you talking about himself? See? That's he right. said, you don't have no, no dealings with the world. Man, you're honest, you know, that's what God says. That's another thing you need to understand. Stop worrying about the world. Stop worrying about that. Amen. God is going to provide for you. He already said it. You know what I'm saying? He's going to keep you moving. That's I right. always think because the year two, this is going into 2025. You're supposed to get rid of your 2024 and go get your 2020. That ain't what God's talking about, man. That ain't what the blessings that God's going to bestow on you. But they got some people out there that God can give them that kind of blessing. Amen. But that all you are you doing what you're supposed to do, like what, uh, what God wants you to do. You see what I'm saying? Stop trying to be evil, thinking of doing good, knowing in your heart that you evil. You understand what I'm saying? See, I laughed and joked in people's face too. I come to find out that now, you know what I tell my wife? Love is not something that you say. Love is something that you show. That's it. You understand? Yeah. If you love me, show me you love me. Amen. That's what God wants. If you love God, show God you love him. Because he say you, that, that I still thinking that you are doing good with your heart being evil or trying to be slick and denying it. If you do one thing, God said you break one law, you know, already broke all of them. So that's why I try to tell you what God said, don't be of the world, but the world will always be trying to get you to do something. That's against God. Amen. You understand? That's the right. only way you can stay faithful to God is how? By doing it according to the law. Oh, according right. to you are the, you are the, the, you are according to the law of the world right now. Not to keep the man back then, because God already told you. That's why he said he's son Jesus. But he didn't son Jesus to condemn the Ten Commandments from back then. But those that who did, who right now today could be saved through him. You see what I mean? Amen. See, you can you, you would you couldn't live those Ten Commandments right now. You know what I'm Because they got people out there all every day covered in other people's stuff. Yes, sir. They got people out there every day that's committing murder. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? They got people out there every day that's stealing. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? See, Jesus already knew. See, they be down there cutting your hand off and stoning you and cutting your head off. Man, people could never bump up. You couldn't do that now. So Jesus came and said, What? I'm going to give you my word. Guess what God did? God, God gave me his word. That's what he said right here in 14. I just agree. That let you know I'll be in the word. He said, I have given them thy word. Who are you talking about? He's talking about you. Amen, brother. He talk, put yourself in that position. That's me. That's me. He talking. He said, I've given them. You know that's what I'm saying? He, he said, that's more than one. I have given them thy word. That means those other people that's reading God's word and trying to live according to the way God wants. Ain't no trying living to the way of God. But it's not hard. See, that's what the disciples thought way back then, 2,024 years ago. They said, oh man, this teaching him too hard. We don't have to cut out. I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read it to you right now. I'm going to read it to you next week. I'm going to open with that. I'm going to show you what the disciples said. You, understand? you know what the disciples said? That, oh, Lord, this word is too hard. We got to go. Jesus met my when they left. Jesus turned around and looked at his word and said, y'all going to leave too? All right, all right. See, at this time, John, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 the one that betrayed him. Uh, Judas. Judas. Judas was still with him at that time. That's right. But God said, he didn't say, he turned to his 12 and said, y'all going to get somewhere too. And they said, oh, no, Lord, we ain't going to go where we going to go. But Jesus then knew that one of them among them was a devil. That's right. That one of them was going to betray him. That's right. You see what I mean? I'm going to say, even then, when Judas was there, Jesus asked him to. Amen. It was the question was put to Judas. That's show right. That's see, right. I'm, I was a Judas. See, so Jesus asking me too, hey, you finna leave on when I start reading all of this, he about condemning me and sending me to hell and, and oh, not God, blessing God. me and all these other things. He want to know, well, are you going to leave? I say, well, no, Lord. Amen. Because if I keep your word, Lord God, you're not going to do these things to Amen. me. So I'm going to keep your word, Lord. It's easier to keep your word, Lord God. And I'm going to keep your word because I don't know what they mean. And it was hard. Because God tells you that to do is believe. Amen. Do you believe? I believe, brother. I believe, Lord. 
Man, look here, God ain't playing no games with you, man. He make it simple for you, man. Right. It's simple. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, 14. I, I, I have given them thy word, and the, and the world had hated them. Have hated the world. Hold on. And the world and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Amen. Even as I am not of the world. 15 say, I pray. God say he prayed. Amen. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Jesus talking to his father. Please don't take them out of this world, Amen. Lord. God be a witness. Don't take this. I'm going to try to take that love right there. He already knows you even. He said, but please, Lord, don't take them out of this world. Talking to disciples. Talking about his disciples. Yeah. yeah. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Yeah. You see what I'm mean? saying? Hey, talking about yeah. the disciples. Talking about the disciples. Those That's that right. turned away and booked up. You know what I'm mean? saying? The ones that left. He was right talking right. to his 12. Yeah. He was talking to the 12. Don't take them, Lord. They bad. They got to preach. They yeah, got to teach. He said they are. This is Jesus. 16. 16 verse Jesus said. They are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. You see what I'm saying? Amen. That's right. So that if you live, you are his disciples now. Just like back then. Amen. If you're teaching the gospel, then you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. You understand what I'm saying? That's one thing about it. We might all fall up under a different category. You understand? Some preachers, some teachers, some of that. Yes, but sir. we all are disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's a you problem. understand? You can be a disciple of Jesus Christ. All you got to do is just like you say, go ye and teach, uh, go ye in the all of the world and teach the gospel. Amen. You understand? And you could be my disciple. You understand? My God, my yeah. God. Mm hmm. And it says 17 on the list. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. What sanctification? Sanctification? I might have to look it up. I, I, sanctification meaning clean. Uh, pure sanctification. Because it got to do something with a it's a, with clean air. Yeah, okay, it's that footnote right down what the side. Second, what are you okay with this? 17, 17. Let me see. 17, 17. Okay, you all know. It will be E. Set them apart. That's what it is. So when you're sanctified, you set, set them apart from the world. So that's what it means, you being a peculiar people. Yes, sir, you're different. And that's what he say, come ye from amongst them. That's right. So he was saying that, it, Jesus was saying that, God, don't take his disciples out of the world. That's right. But sanctify them. Sanctify them. Set them apart from the world. From the world. So you'll be able to say, that boy right there live for Jesus Christ. Amen. See what I'm saying? They'll be able to say that. Oh, yeah, don't worry about old me, Bob, man. He ain't going to do nothing. He living for God now. You know, you can do whatever yeah. I'm going to try to tell you, you know what the word is saying. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. God says, see, I don't worry about the law. I fight all my battles now. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even in your way. So what you bothering with me for? You see what I'm saying? I ain't going to do nothing but give you some Jesus. I'm going to give you some of this word. Yes, sir. So if that's what your man is asking for, you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you, the Lord is going to fight my battle. Amen. So I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. And that's the way I see it, because the word don't come back more. Amen. God's Amen. word is power. God said that he will fight my battle. That's what he said. Y'all don't have to go Amen. out there and be Amen. doing all, to be all strenuous. Man, my thing is to go there and teach the gospel. That's yes, not hard. No, sir. What am I there wrestling around with you for then? Huh? That would be f foolish. Uh, you own it, Brother Mark. Man, God made my life so simple, man. I wake up, I praise God. I walk through my day uh, uh, of making sure that I'm living according to the way God wants me to live. Lord, I, 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 I pray and then I go to sleep. Because everything else in between, God leave up to me. So if I want to go eat, I got to go eat. Now you can sit there and starve yourself to death. Ain't that something, Pastor? Ain't that? A man can sit somewhere. I mean, he ain't got no, he's not tied up or stressed. But he, in his mind, that's how powerful the mind is. Oh, my that he would sit there and say, oh, I don't want to drink nothing and I don't want to eat nothing. He would do that. 
You understand? Until he starved himself to death. But you can't mess around and go and believe that Jesus Christ is the word of God. Jesus Christ is God's son. This is what I said last week. You can't mess around. See, I ain't got you can't, I ain't gonna tell you that. Jesus, but that ain't what I got to do. This word and already put that out there. I want you to understand that because I don't quite show somebody called over there when I told I don't call Jesus God. That's what this book say. This book is this is the word of God and the word say that Jesus is God. It said that, 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 that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and these three are one. Amen. So I don't have to say it. The word says it. Now the word says it. Because the word got power. Don't try to twist the words up of God. I ain't got to tell you that. Amen. <clears throat> you understand? You got the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus is, is the Word of God. So the Word of God is with you. And the, and the Holy Spirit is God's Spirit. You understand what I'm saying? That's all it is. I can't change that. That's, That's right. what it says. That's what it says. The Word of God don't change. Amen. So I thank the Lord. I have another one for you. We'll go to uh, 1 Corinthians. Page 1357. I'm trying to tell you why I have some more to give to you, but I'm going to skip over that. And I'm going to start it next week. It ain't no sense in it. We have a part five. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's power in the world. It ain't bad, it was, and, and I'm going to tell you that uh, we're going we're gonna to start next week. But just like I told you, we're going to start next week where Jesus' disciples chose to walk away. Yeah. Because this word was hard. When I wish I could have kept because I had it in here. That, but then we say today that all you had to do was believe. And that's what I wanted to show you. What was so hard about that? Because Jesus told him to go and sell all that you have and follow me. Amen. You understand? Know and back then you probably would have had to do that. Because the people were spreading out so far. You know, since if you had to stand right here in this spot, we got to go. The people have already been preached to right here. We got to go and tell somebody else. Amen. You understand? Know but now God got so many people working for him now that we are all over the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we, look, I'm going to tell you right now that uh, uh, Jesus Christ, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ, I know twice he used animals. You understand what I'm saying? Once he used a donkey with the donkey with, with the uh, prophet. Yes, sir. Baal, he used, a, with, used the donkey and, and to tell him that he was fit to die. And then he had a horse over there with a uh, 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 Saul was riding on a horse. You understand? So, you know, he stopped. You understand? So, I you know, like Pastor say, he brought him to my attention. Did he throw him off of it? I don't know. Did he knock him down? I'm going to have to go and look at That was something he made me think about. I'm going to have to. So, next week, we will start with Jesus' disciples. I want you to see. Now, if you want to hear, if you want to know, go Google it. It'll tell you where the where Jesus' disciples wanted to quit. You understand? The twelve was there with them, but they had more of it. There was a whole bunch of it. Remember they said, oh man, you just say, well, what you really told them what to do? And then, then the disciples had already done all that they that Jesus told them. And guess what? Because uh, Matthew was a tax collector. Matthew met body God. He had one of the best jobs in it, in, in, to be a Jew and to be working for the Romans as a tax collector. He was getting the money and writing it down. Don't nobody, he could have been it just as it's simple as he want. One for you, two for me. One for you, three for me. You see what I mean? Yeah. But he stopped and walked away from his job and followed Jesus. My you see what he's saying? My God. Amen. Because yeah. that's what Jesus is talking about. If you're working at a job and you know that that job is not doing the proper thing, it ain't hard for you to walk away from that. You're a man of God. Jesus don't want you. Yeah, Jesus don't want you to walk away from your your uh, fifty dollar an hour job and uh, and then do this because. You know, it, 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 you're doing the right thing. No, nah, that ain't what it means, man. Amen. Stop twisting this word up. People are twisting the word up. I ain't been to sell all I have. Okay, you know, all right. You know, then 1357. That's First Corinthians chapter 14. Chapter 4. Look in this book, chapter 4. Book of Corinthians, real quick. Let's see. First Corinthians chapter 4. 14? Yeah, chapter 4. Verse 19. Okay. Chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 19. Okay? Okay. Now I want you to understand, see, this is Paul writing to the Corinthians. I ain't going to get it wrong with this. You know what I'm saying? Paul writing to the Corinthians. You know what I'm saying? Okay, verse uh, 19 says, 
chapter 1, verse 13, 13. But I will come to you shortly. It's Paul saying this. Amen. If the Lord will and will not. See, that's what you need to do. Are you coming? Oh, man, I'm going to be there at the Lord's will. Oh, man, if the Lord is the will, all will not, I won't do it. You can't do nothing. If you do like Jesus, man, don't do nothing without God. Amen. Pray about it if you're having trouble, if you're thinking about it, something that you should do or something you shouldn't do. Pray about it. God won't help you. Yes, and if sir. God's will, do it. If God's will for you not to do it, then don't do it, man. Amen. These are the things that I decided to do. I started deciding to do God's will. I said, I'm going to do God's will. You understand? Should I go to this party where they drinking and carrying on and all gang members and I know what? No, I'm not going to do that. Oh, my I God. didn't come, man. God I didn't like you know the will of God. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You got to do what God wants you to do. Amen. You don't know what? You remember back in the day what would jump off when you go into the place where you ain't supposed to be? Amen. What happened if you the one, man? I had a, a brother that just died right here on Concord in Delaware, man. And he had nothing to do with what was going on. You understand? The gun went off and he killed him. Now he dead. And another young brother in jail. Been to go to prison probably for the rest of the oh, life. Was well, it wasn't the sheep that that other man? That was my friend. Me and him had hung around for a while, man. You know, Mr. Carrington, that was my friend. I thank God. I pray. I hope that the Lord have you uh, uh, you're doing the right thing, man. You know, and finally you're doing the right thing. And God changed something in your life, man. Because you had a family, man. You see what I'm saying? Stop doing the confusion. You don't know, man. They got a bullet out there. It don't have your name on it. Because it ain't yours. But the devil can get sent in whatever direction he wanted to go in, man. Live for God, man. And do the things that God wants Amen, you to do. Amen, brother. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I pray for you, my brother. I pray for your family right now. In the name of Jesus, yeah, Lord, God. We ask you to send the uh, comforting angels to him, Lord God, that you comfort his family, Lord yes. God, that you be a provider for him, Lord God, now. For the provider is gone, Lord God. We thank you. We marvel and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord. Yes, Lord. Verse 19. But I will come to you, Charlotte, if, if the Lord will and will not. Not not, not the, the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. You understand? Glory, you mean, brother. You mean to come with the power. You gotta have the power, yeah. She said, I ain't coming over there with the ones that puffed up. I'm gonna bring the power. Uh huh. It right. says, uh, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. You know what I'm saying? See, that's what, the, that's what Jesus is. Amen. See, Jesus, he, even though he's the word, he still has all power. He got all power. So, well, well, I'm a, I ain't got time to follow a double OG, triple OG. You might have some power. Yeah. But Jesus got all power. I, I'm going to all power. So I'm gonna think I'm gonna ride with the all power yeah, too. Because whatever, you, but whatever you think of, he can mess around and count it. So that's why I'm gonna ride with all power. Yes, you know sir. Yes, sir. And all power say don't go to those places. Uh, all power yeah. say don't be in there thinking that what you're doing is evil is good. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. You see what I'm saying? You to change your life. What you doing in there? You go to church on Sunday in the club, and if you in the club on Saturday, but you go, what you doing in there? Lord, have mercy. Those people seeing you, man. What y'all do? Y'all go to the club on Saturday, and you say, hey, man, what y'all gonna do? Oh, man, I'm, I'm gonna go to church. All right, man, I'm gonna come ride with you. You see what I'm saying? That's foolish. That is, brother. Come on, man, you ain't in there talking about that. You ain't there getting yourself in trouble, man. Because you ain't supposed to be in there. Amen. Come on, man. Let's stop it, man. Stop it. For the kingdom of God is not in the word, but in power. What will ye? What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? Uh, you see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. None of you, you see what I'm saying? God says, spoil the rod and spoil the child. So he said, to all that, you know, should he, should he come with the rod? No, that person changed. You understand that? Oh. And I don't, I don't think I want the rod, Lord. And I want the rod. No, I don't want the rod, Lord. You understand? So we're going to close right there. And we're going to close with, uh, 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 hold on, we're going to go to page 1300. It's going to be our closing scripture for today. Because I already told you we're going to come back. We're going to have a part five. There's power in the word. So we're going to go to page 1389.
Lord. He was so gracious, so merciful. I thank you for the word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It changed me. It did. I thank the word for changing me, man. Yes. We're going to read Galatians, the sixth chapter. We're going to read verse seven through nine. Now, we're going to close with this. For I do not understand that you know what path he had having the book, so he won't let you know it's a flip side to everything, right? Amen. So you don't know God, that's why I want to show you all the smooth things because that's how it is with me, right? You know, God just tell me this. As long as I'm doing being obedient to God's word, God, I can see all the wonderful and marvelous things that God has set before me. How people are changing. How I was just like the, you know, how my life is so much. My God. Changing. So you know, really, do I thought about it? I think, man, I went to the Book of Revelation, look for something to give y'all that was the flip side to scare your ass to them. But God, that's wrong with allowing me to do that. But He gave me this right here to give to you. Verse 7 through 9, God said that, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Hi, God. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You see what I'm saying? Amen. So they can't, that, that right there is just a scripture that gives you the flip side all by itself. That's it, okay? brother. Because he's talking about you yourself personally. My God. If you want to sow it, you better be man enough to read it. Lord you know, have right? mercy. So I don't want to show it, but that, you know, I ain't had to go look for a flip side. That scripture right there will give you the smooth and the flip right there. But in verse 8 says, For he that soweth to him flesh, to his flesh, shall of uh, the flesh reap corruption. Lord have mercy. God said you do the things you do in your flesh. You ain't gonna get nothing but corruption. Lord, have mercy. They don't even have a flip side to that. Do you see what I'm trying to tell That's you? it, brother. Yeah, they don't even have a flip side to Amen. that. Okay, look here, man. God bless the one who said that. He said, uh, he said, flesh, because, because. He said, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Amen. You understand me? And, and the verse 9 said, and let us not be weary. In well doing. Amen. But in due season, we shall reap if we thank not. Lord, have yeah, mercy, Jesus. Now that's the word of God. You know what that is? That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's how powerful that is. God, I, I went to look for a word to escape. But God said, all you got to do is just go in this, this scripture. He'll show you the wonderful things that God will do for you. Amen, brother. But he said, you will do it in your flesh. Your flesh reap nothing but corruption. Lord, have so mercy, that's Jesus. That's all you're going to get out of it. All you do, if you do it, if you want to go and party and then shake your groove thing and all that, that's all you won't get. Now, my all God, God, my God, my God. God. That was all I got. So we thank you. We marvel and we glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.